Hello, I'm Peter Zemsky, Strategy Professor and Deputy Dean at INSEAD. I'm here at the Singularity University Global Summit talking with legend Peter Diamandis, <laughs> the um, founder of SU. Peter, thanks a lot for taking time with us. A pleasure to be here with all of you and a pleasure to be here with you, Peter. Um, so I loved your, your keynote. I just love to dig deeper on some of the things you brought up. Sure. Really like the idea around the acceleration of acceleration. Yeah. And how, could you talk to us about how that's really playing out, just to say around AI. Is, yeah. Are we seeing that there? So, you know, a, a lot of folks sort of feel the fact that uh, what we can do every day, every minute is getting more and more. And we've talked about, and we know that computers are getting faster and faster. And what most people don't realize is it's not just that these computers and this computational power is accelerating, but everything built on top of that, on top of computation, like 3D printing, like blockchain, like AI, uh, like augmented virtual reality, all those things are accelerating. There's more capital flowing into the market, more entrepreneurs are in fact being able to start newer and more powerful companies. So, you know, we talk about artificial intelligence. Um, I think anybody who is at all in the technology field or anybody who's in business, if you haven't thought about AI and how it's going to impact your business, um, it's a critical error. So uh, artificial intelligence, uh, whether it's machine learning or neural networks, all these different flavors and versions of, machine, of, of AI, uh, is something that's going to differentiate success from failure in business. So it's a critically important tool it's, um, it's effectively equivalent to if you go back to the early and mid-90s when people talked about, are you on the web yet? Or do you have a website? Do you use internet? Do you use email? That was a transition of old school linear business to a sort of the first step, if you would, on the rung towards exponential, um, being an exponential organization. And today, it's critically important for companies to think about what data are we collecting? What data are we able to analyze and how we analyze that data with artificial intelligence and how we're supplementing uh, human decision making, human skills with AI across the board. What kind of mistakes do you see people making? Because a lot of people have woken up to AI, so there's a lot of attention, but are they asking the right questions? Are they thinking about it in the right way? I think the mistakes that folks are making is that they feel they need to be a Google or a Facebook or a Tesla to be making use of AI. I think any company that has got customer-facing uh, services, any company that has uh, significant amounts of data uh, can start to look at AI to start asking questions that uh, are not intuitive. Like, for example, looking at our sales data, is there a correlation between that and the weather? Is there a correlation between the time of the day or the age of people buying it? And, you know, what this is really about is using... Um, AI at a light or medium or capable mm -hmm. high, high level to, to start to create correlations and insights, to start to create algorithms. Algorithms, you know, an a ancient term going back to the Middle East, if you would, to, the, uh, to Arabia, uh, that it's a, it's a process that can bring the data in and give you predictive analytics to say, okay, if this kind of person is calling at this time of day, here's the best thing to sell them, or this is the best way to respond, mm -hmm. or these are the insights that you can garner from the data that you have. You brought up the, you know, so the consumer internet famously, I think, really played to the advantage of startups and the big tech companies. Do you think this whole new wave with AI will have more in it for traditional companies? I think it's got, uh, you know, juice and, and power for everybody. I mean, it's not just, I mean, I think every single startup starting today is asking the question of how can we aggregate a unique set of data and how can we generate algorithms around that that deliver value to larger companies. Um, but I also feel like large companies have things that they don't realize they have. So, you know, if you're running a medium or large size corporation, you have a treasure trove of data that is sitting there typically in Excel sheets or in Salesforce or whatever it might be. And it's how do you analyze that data? How do you use that data? How do you create uh, learnings around that data? Um, that is the, the early part. So ultimately, uh, your choice is going to be, number one, are you going to hire the people inside your organization who understand even what the most basics of AI are? 
Uh, and you can do that. Are you going to train the people in your organization mm. to have them understand it, or are you going to outsource it? And those are all three valid, uh, valid uh, ways of approaching it. But ignoring it and hoping it goes away is not valid because, you know, down the line, I don't know if it's 10 years or 20 years from now, I'm going to see companies uh, bifurcate into two groups, those that are using AI and those that are out of business. Um, and it's, it's just that, it's that blunt. When you think about that bifurcation, with all of the emphasis on machine learning, how important is human learning going to be for navigating that, that split? So, listen, human learning is always fundamental uh, until we have full-on, you know, general AI and we're taking the humans out of the loop. Uh, in the next 20 years, it's really about human tech collaboration. It's about human robot collaboration. It's about human AI collaboration. It's about how do you uh, empower humans to make choices, whether you're a physician looking at uh, a radiological image or a path or a CAT scan or MRI and an AI is helping you analyze it so that you can spend less time you know, making mistakes or it was a, it was a very famously a competition last year mm -hmm. in, which, uh, in which a contract was written that had a known set of errors in it and that contract was given to a set of lawyers and said please analyze it and find all the mistakes and given to an AI program, I think it was called Law Geeks, and to analyze and find the mistakes. And the lawyers took about two hours and found something like 80% of the mistakes and the AI took like a minute and found like 95% of the errors. So it's how do you collaborate, right? How do you use technology to do what it does best and how do you use humans to do what we do best? And it's not about one or the other, it's really about collaboration, but it cannot be ignored. And so, you know, in the work that we're doing at Singular University, I'm not trying, as I'm teaching my, uh, my alumni and my Abundance 360 CEOs, I'm not trying to turn them into you know, uh, machine learning programmers. I'm trying to just have everybody understand what can AI really do where are places where it can be used, and what are the resources that you can utilize, either as platforms outside or as basic, basic methodologies uh, that are available today. Now you've consistently emphasized using technology to, to tackle really big social problems, and yet still over the last year, I think we've really seen growing anxiety around technology, growing pushback. Um, what do you make of that? Um, are we pushing too fast? So, uh, I was, um, we're here at SU Singularity Summit, and I was talking to a, a group of executives yesterday, and I was explaining how, in fact, the rate of technological acceleration is accelerating. And uh, a person stopped me and said, you know, Dr. Diamandis is, in fact, faster, better. And I said, that's the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Faster is not necessarily better, but the question is, do you have any control over it? And I would say that we don't. I would say that the rate of technological acceleration, what we're seeing in the marketplace, in computation, let alone quantum computing, AI, networks and sensors, robotics, 3D printing, synthetic biology, augmented virtual reality, blockchain, all these technologies are accelerating and getting more and more powerful, more and more versatile, more and more available, not to just you know, a few million entrepreneurs, eventually to eight billion people on the planet. And all this accelerates things. So it is happening. And the question ultimately is how do you channel it? How do you use it to solve the world's biggest problems? How do you use it to make the world a better place? Um, and that's the choice we have, to use technology to benefit humanity. Uh, and I think that is, for me, in the work that I do, again, at the XPRIZE, at SU, and in Abundance 360, is how do I help entrepreneurs, how do I help CEOs use technology to solve the world's biggest problems? One of the things you bring up is the fact that you shouldn't just look at these technologies in isolation, but they're interacting. And so one of the things you, you were pushing is just the importance of bandwidth that's coming online. What's driving that? Why is it so important? And again, how does that come back and say interact with, with advances in AI? Uh, so what's, it used to be that if you were an expert in computation or an expert in biotechnology, that was great. Uh, but what's going on right now is we're seeing this convergence of all of these exponentials coming together and where the real juice is, the real opportunity is the, is the business models as 
two, three, four of these come together, right? What happens when 5G broadband, right, 10 gigabit per second connectivity and, and AI and augmented reality converge to transform everything, advertising, you know, retail, education, entertainment, and these are things that are, that are gonna be happening. So ultimately, um, this convergence is where the new business models come out of. One of the things that's going on right now that no one's talking about mm -hmm. is the notion that we're about to connect eight billion people on the planet. Uh, the numbers are the following. Back in 2010, we had about a billion people or so connected. By 2017, we had half the world connected at 3.7 billion people connected globally on the internet. By 2022 to 2024, the next you know, two to five years, we're about to connect eight billion people. We're covering the planet with 5G on the ground. We've got Google Loon with stratospheric balloons. We've got OneWeb and, Star and Starlink, which is SpaceX's uh, 12,000 satellite constellation and Coupier, which is um, Blue Origin, Jeff Bezos' uh, 3,000 satellite constellation, and then a bunch of other constellations out of China and other parts of the world. And so all of a sudden we're heading towards a world where every square meter is, is online, is connected. There is no escaping, but the price begins to diminish and a child in the middle of, you know, pick your favorite developing world uh, has gigabit connection speeds. What, what do you think we need to do to really leverage that, though, to solve some of the problems? It's particularly, say, just access and inclusion into the global economy. I assume bandwidth alone is not going to be enough. Well, I mean, all of these things are happening, and they're happening at extraordinary rates. So, yeah, bandwidth is, is, a, is a requirement. Um, but obviously, low-cost devices, and, you know, mm -hmm. these devices are getting cheaper and cheaper. Uh, and I, you know, one of the questions I ask to... Uh, the Singular University audience here is, you know, can you imagine that Amazon and Google are going to give away tablets for free and why would they do that? And I believe, you know, that will happen. I've seen $50 tablets, $40 tablets. And if Amazon says, hey, here's an Amazon tablet um, for free, you just have to buy stuff off of Amazon. Or Google says, here's a Google tablet for free. I just need to be able to collect and utilize your data analytics. And so, you know, one could clearly imagine these devices becoming available for free. And then you need the software layer on top of that that can educate. And we just had an award uh, a few months back, earlier in mid-2019, of, uh, of something called the Global Learning X Prize. It was a $15 million purse that Elon Musk funded with Tony Robbins, the DeVos family, and challenged teams to create a piece of Android software that can take a child in the middle of any place from illiteracy to reading, writing, and numeracy, and it was extraordinary. The results were an hour of use of the tablet per day was equivalent of the child being in full-time school, but there was no full-time school near them, not within hours of driving uh, distance. Um, one last question. So yeah. earlier today, we announced a new partnership between Singularity University and INSEAD. Yes. Um, what yeah, it was great, uh, great for all around. What, um, what excites you about that, and what advice do you have for us at INSEAD as we get involved in this community and this, this organization that you've built? Sure. I mean, what excites me about it is SU is still, I mean, SU's brand has been growing globally, and we have an incredible, uh, you know, vi a really passionate group of a million people as part of our alumni core uh, and, our, and our communities and chapters around the world, uh, but it's still just the beginning. I think people need to realize that these technologies are transforming the world, right? There is no industry that is not going to be fundamentally transformed in the next decade by these technologies. I mean, not one industry. And at the same time, as I, as I like to speak to our, our alumni, we're going to create more wealth in the next 10 years than we have in the entire past century. So people need to understand the power that's coming. This is not to be avoided, not to be missed. And so how do we uh, reach uh, the audience? Obviously, NCI has an incredible brand globally around the world, and partnering uh, between us is a, is a great thing to help people um, really tune in and appreciate how important this is to their business. Great. So, Peter, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We really look forward to working with you and the community on how we can leverage these technologies to really drive value in businesses for society. Take care, everybody. Pleasure to meet you. Peter? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.